And he's got a little slurpy tongue. But what has he got? Oh, look at He's got teeth. Hey, how you doing? Before we get very far along in this video, I want you to see the tools that we're using. Trainsaw, you're familiar with that, but this thing here, this is a um, three-tooth blade. It's made by ArborTech, fits into this little Milwaukee side grinder, but this hogs off a lot of material very fast, and I've never had a problem with it kick back. Okay, that one is excellent. Next, we have this die grinder. This is a DeWalt. Not very spendy, but with these, this is this bit that's in here. See this bit? Oh, close, look. It's got little spurs on it. Sometimes you have, to, you have to soak it and stuff to get the sap out of it, the collected stuff. But this, I do all of the fur kind of stuff and hogging off material with this. Uh, this is a three-quarter inch barrel with these little spurs. It's also got spurs on the end. Okay, next is another one, same type of bit, but it's a, a teardrop shape. And then when you get to the fine detail or finer, you can use like this, the Dremel tool. Me, I use, uh, where is it here? Uh, this is the end of it, but it's up here. It's a Fordham, it hangs, and then it's got a little drive shaft that goes down to a pencil kind of an end on it. Lots of good control for doing stuff around the nose or the mouth. Oops, there. Nose, mouth, teeth. And then you can change the bits in it and then there's different collet size bits. Okay, back over here to bits. Oh, around the tongue, I use this little bitty tiny little thing here. And this little one, those are Dremel tool bits. And then around the eye, this one, eyes can be a challenge. Now this one, this is a barrel with the little spur bits, cutters on the edge of it. But if you notice, look at the end of it, it's flat. I ground it flat so that I could put it right on the eye and press on it, if you can see that. So I, and it will just kind of polish up the eye, but I can slowly just move the cutter out to get the shape that I want. And this will fit into that little, into this, it'll fit into there, or into the die grinder. But this one here with the Fordham, much more control for doing detail work. So what I did all of the teeth around the teeth using the Fordham, and then the little Dremel tool cutters in the, to do the teeth and the tongue, okay? There, see. But I wanted you to see these, See the different tools that we're using. So as you see them on, on the video, it'll all make sense, okay? I'm gonna hang the bear right up against the log that it gets scribed to. Now, there's no easy way to get a vertical scribe on something. The, the bubble level on my, on my scriber that I use on the log home stuff, it, the, it only works on a horizontal line. It doesn't do much or anything helpful on a vertical line. So it's mark it a little bit, move it down, cut it a little bit, get a little closer so I can get a better scribe on it. Put it back up again. But I didn't want to cut the knobs off of this this cedar pole that goes up. See, this is going up in the house, and it's going to be the bottom of this vertical log. The bottom of it is over seven feet off the floor. And then it goes up to, what, the top of it. Let's see, the log seven, so it goes up. So it's over 15 feet high to the top of it once it's done. But just keep working it in and cut off a little bit more and... So I got it hanging. You know, it, some things aren't just real fast, but uh, it took me over an hour to get that fitted into there. But then move it out, and I start start with the head to get the uh, proportions, because the head is gonna 
kind of kind of dictate everything else. And I won't put the character in the face or anything to start with, but to get the basic shape of it and to get the size and proportions and to get it turned correctly, because this bear's this bear is hanging on the side of the tree, and then uh, he's got his head kind of twisted around to the side. So you'll see, well, you see his face from one side, and here you see me working on the feet, because you can see the feet, because the where he sets, the feet are ten feet off the floor, right above the kitchen sink, <laughs> off above the kitchen sink, and a little bit to the to the right, about three feet, I guess. But you can see his feet there, so he wanted to have a real nice. <laughs> I've never, I've never carved a bear before where his backside was so visible. So we highlighted his feet. I guess that's the long and short of it. And he ended up with only four toes on each foot instead of five. But I kind of ran out of room. He didn't mind. But we got, well. The proportions correct off of the off of the face, work in the feet, and you see me with that little die grinder again and uh, and then it's time to start the fur. Yeah, but you wanna start the fur since everything's layered on fur. You always gotta start at the bottom and work to the top. Like feathers, so you gotta get them in the correct order. So and here I'm working through and pushing it in. Uh, when I say push it in, you got the basic clunky shape of the bear, and then you got to get the muscle group so the muscles show through correct, and the long wispy hair that's, I want to say the elbow, but you get that long wispy hair so it looks correct hanging down, and he's twisty turny on this on this log, so his back has to have um the fur looking like it's you know so it's twisted around just like it would be and a lot of this you have to do by imagining you know you image it and you picture it in your mind and you know we've got you'll see it shows up later we've got um teddy bears sometimes that i'll bring out in position and position them in the way that it's supposed to be and then you know, you go back to the actual structure of the bear, and those muscle groups have to show through for it to look right, and the wrinkles around the neck, you know, to get all that in place. Then once we got them all done, we drilled a hole from the back side of the log all the way up through the bear, three-quarter inch, well, it's a little better than three-quarter, three-quarter inch shaft that goes in there, so that that shaft would fit into the bear and we could set him on because once he's up in place it's working off of a ladder and this thing right where I'm standing right here I would be my feet would be eight feet or seven feet off the floor so I wanted it easy you know <laughs> we're going to put it back together just to have him pop right into place so very doable you just keep working it back until it looks like what's in your imagination of a bear hanging on a tree up above the kitchen sink because he was in there trying to get snacks and got caught and scurried up the tree to get out of the way because he was in trouble.